Hi, everybody. Welcome back to English for You. I'm Pat, and I'm Tiffany. So we're on day two now of our literature article for the month, which is Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Let's recap what happened on day one. We started out by meeting Charlie Bucket, who、mm-hmm. is a poor boy from a poor family. Right, and they're they're not very well off because they live with a lot of people at home. So his mom, his dad, and his four grandparents, and they all share a tiny bed. Well, I think his grandparents share yeah, a tiny bed. Yeah, the four grandparents, grandparents are in one bed.、Mm-hmm. That's how poor they are. His dad has、uh, his only job he can get is to clear snow off the sidewalks, and mom just looks after the four old people, make sure they have enough to eat, and that's hard because、yeah. the family just doesn't have much money at all. And then、um, in this place that they're living in, there's a very, very famous. Chocolate genius called Willy Wonka. So Willy Wonka has a chocolate factory, and everybody loves his chocolate. Yep, he's a chocolate genius. But we found he's fired all of his employees years ago to protect his secrets. Yet ever since then, the chocolate just got better and better, even though no one seems to work at the factory. Yeah, which is very strange. It is. But then Willy Wonka made an announcement, and he decided to let people. Tour the factory now. How did he choose the people? Well, he said that he's going to hide five golden tickets inside the chocolate bars or his chocolate bars. So, if you're very, very lucky, you get to tour inside of this very secretive. Chocolate factory. Yep. If they find the tickets, then they're in. So the hunt is on.、Mm. Let's read day two to find out how it goes. Reading. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. People all around the world bought Wonka's candy bars and searched for the five golden tickets. Everyone kept an eye on the news. The first one was found by Augustus Gloop, a fat, greedy boy from Germany. Other winners soon followed: rich, spoiled Veraca Salts. Gum chewing Violet Beauregard and TV lover Mike TV. Charlie really wanted to find the final ticket. His family chipped in to buy him a chocolate bar for his birthday, but it wasn't there. Then Grandpa Joe used his savings to get another, but they were unlucky again. Then Charlie found a coin on the floor and bought himself a chocolate bar. The last golden ticket was inside. Grandpa Joe was so happy that he got out of bed for the first time in years. Charlie could take one adult with him to the factory, so he chose Grandpa Joe. They went to Wonka's factory with the other winners, and the gates opened at last. All right, so let's continue reading our story of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. It says people all around the world bought Wonka's candy bars and searched for the five golden tickets. So I can imagine that it is complete. Madness. Yeah, it's chaos. It's and this is the, one of the fun parts of the movie is you know rich people are buying trucks full of candy bars and、mm-hmm. having their workers in their factories search every one and don't even eat the chocolate, which、yeah. is terrible. <laughs>、um, we also see that everyone kept an eye on the news. Now, this phrase to keep an eye on something in this case means to pay attention to a particular thing. Even when you're doing something else, so even though these people are going to work and going to school and getting on with their lives, they're listening to the radio or watching TVs or they're stopping in the street to look through a window into a TV shop or buying newspapers to see what's happening. Has anyone found one yet? We could also say during the lunch break, the teacher kept an eye on the students while she marked their essays to make sure everyone was behaving. Ooh, she's watching us like a hawk. <laughs> yeah, she's just keeping an eye to make sure nothing goes wrong. <laughs> right. Okay. So next, the story says the first one was found by Augustus Gloop, a fat, greedy boy from Germany. I remember this part of the、yeah. of the movie as well. It was really funny. So this boy, he was really big. He was very chubby. We call him. We can say fat. We can say fat for this kid. <laughs> yeah, 
have. And he was also very greedy, which is our vocabulary word. It's spelled G R E E D Y. Greedy. Greedy here is an adjective, and it means to have a very selfish desire to have more than、um, what you need. So it can be、um, like money, food,、um, clothes.、Mm-hmm. So you want to have more than what you actually need. So that's called being very greedy, and you don't want to share with others. Now we know a very famous person from a story. His name is Scrooge.、Mm-hmm. Scrooge is a greedy man, so we can say Scrooge was a greedy man, and he didn't want to share his money with other people. Yeah, one one thing about the people who are greedy is that they always want more. They've、mm-hmm. never got enough and never got too much. Okay, so he wins the first ticket, and I mean, you know, if you are a fat kid and you got a <laughs> ticket to a chocolate factory, I mean, this is a match made in heaven, really.、Um, and then we find that other winners soon followed. Okay, so the first one's gone, and then as the days go by, more appear, and we meet some of these winners. We have rich, spoiled Veru. Luca Salt. We have gum chewing Violet Beauregard and TV lover Mike TV. Now you might think some of these names are quite strange or amusing.、Uh, that is deliberate. Roald Dahl, when he wrote his stories, used funny names or names that told you about the person. So Augustus Gloop does kind of sound like a fat kid.、Mm-hmm. Uh, Mike TV loves TV. That's deliberate. You know, there all of these names have real meanings to them. So we're going to look here at the word winner. W i n n e r, winner, and a person who is a winner is someone who ha- who wins or has won a particular event or a competition or a prize. In this case, it's somebody who has found a golden ticket. They are the winners. Here's an example sentence: The German soccer team was the winner of the last FIFA Soccer World Cup. Ooh, were you happy about that? Um, I think it would have been nice for. England. Brazil to well, of course,、oh. <laughs> England. But、uh, I would have. I mean, Brazil could have. You know,、yeah. it would have been nice for Brazil in their home home cup. But there you go. So we've got these winners, and one of them is rich, spoiled Veruca Salt.、Mm. Spoiled here is an adjective, and it means to have everything that you want, and you kind of.、Uh, Do not accept no. So you always want to get what you want, and in return, this makes this person have this bad behavior. So it's a it's kind of like a negative thing to say about someone. Yeah, we often talk about kids from rich families being a bit spoiled because they can have everything they want and they always get more stuff. So that if there ever comes a time when they can't get it, instead of just accepting it, they get angry and、mm. they start to act out and so on. Now, another one of the winners was gum chewer Violet Beauregard, or gum chewing Violet Beauregard, as the article describes her. And here we've got the verb chew, C H E W, chew. And it means to bite or crush and grind up the food in your mouth, usually to make it easier to swallow and digest. Now, in the case of chewing gum, then you chew chewing gum to kind of exercise your mouth, freshen your breath, and just give you something to do. Really, some people do it to stop themselves、mm-hmm. from smoking, for example. That's one reason that people might chew gum.、Um, some people will t- say, "Don't chew gum in the classroom," and、right. "Don't chew gum if you're going to stand up on stage and take make a speech." Those are very bad. But、mm-hmm. this girl, Violet Beauregard, in the book, she's actually a world champion gum chewer. She's got like the Guinness World Record for the longest piece of chewed gum. Crazy stuff that like that. That must feel really uncomfortable. She must have a really powerful yeah. mouth. Yeah. All right. So we see the word chewing gum. What is that? And if you swallow it, is it bad? Because I remember. When I was younger, someone told me that if I swallow chewing gum, it will stay in your stomach forever. Well, luckily, that's not completely true. Chewing gum is made of parts of plants or, or similar stuff that you can make in a laboratory or factory, and it, you add chemicals and flavors and things like that. Now, one story I heard isn't that it would stay there forever, but it would stay in your stomach for seven years if you <laughs> swallowed a piece of it. But this isn't true either.、Okay. If you swallow <laughs> chewing gum, it will eventually. Break down like other food. It will just take a bit longer to do so, and there's no harm if you swallow one piece of gum. It's not a problem, and I know this because I swallowed some once, and I had to look it up on my phone to see: Am I going to die? <laughs> 
but it's not a problem. Don't swallow lots, though. It's and it's also bad if very small children, especially babies, swallow a lot of it because it's likely to get stuck in their throat and do some bad things like that. Right. So if we accidentally、uh, swallow chewing gum, it's okay. It's okay. But don't do it on purpose. No. Yeah, it's very bad for you. Okay. Well, that's four of the five tickets gone already. Yeah. All right. So who's the last one? Let's see. The story says Charlie really wanted to find the. Final ticket. Of course, he did. Yeah. We next see that his family chipped in to buy him a chocolate bar for his birthday, but it、Aww. wasn't there. No luck this time. But we have got a fun phrase to look at here, which is "chip in." It's today's shortcut for you. So let's listen and find out what this phrase means and how we can use it. Shortcut for you. Hey Connie, it's Hannah's birthday next week. What? Is it August already? Oh man, I didn't get her anything. Me neither. How about we chip in and get her a present together? Sure, we can go shopping together, but I don't think chips would make a very good gift. That's not what I mean. If people chip in, they each give some money to help pay for something. Oh, I see. To chip in means 凑钱 So, what should we get Hannah? I know she really wants a new pair of shoes. How much are the shoes? Six thousand NT dollars. I think we'll need more people to chip in. Okay, welcome back. We so we saw there that to chip in, or we heard there rather, chip in is to make a small contribution to something. Often with money, you give some money, and usually as part of a number of people who are all making these small contributions. Like everyone gives ten nt, fifty nt. Everyone gives a small amount to build up a larger amount that you can do something with. For example, Shana's classmates all chipped in to buy her a fair. Well, gift. If everyone gives fifty NT, you might end up with nearly a thousand NT, and you can buy something nice.、Mm. All right. So let's continue reading the story. It says, "Then Grandpa Joe used his savings to get another, but they were unlucky again." Oh no! I know. So disappointing. But、um, let's first take a look at the word savings. It's spelled S A V I N G S. Savings. Okay, remember you have to keep it as a plural, so you have to keep the s. It, savings is the amount of money you save up. So, for example, if you saved,、uh, let's say, ten thousand in tea, that's called your savings. Now, you can also have something called a savings account, which is basically a bank account where you put your money in to save more. We can also use it in a sentence like this. Jennifer used her savings to buy a new TV for her parents. That's very nice of、yes. her. So, and you can imagine, of course, there's this poor family, the Bucket family, and they've everyone's they haven't got much money, but they've still given it everyone first to buy a chocolate bar for Charlie's birthday, and that didn't work. And then Grandpa Joe uses his savings, the money he saved for a, you know a. A rainy day or something, and he buys a special chocolate bar, and it still doesn't work. So it seems like the the worst kind of things, the worst luck is happening. But as the article says, then Charlie found a coin on the floor and bought himself a chocolate bar. Now, before we get on to the exciting bit, we're going to look at the word coin, C O I N, coin. And a coin is a small piece of money made of metal that represents a particular value of money. Now, they used to have precious metal in the coins; they could be made of gold or silver. These days, I don't think there's that much precious metal left、mm -hmm. in any coins.、Um, now, Taiwan, of course, has coins that are for one NT. Five NT, ten NT, and fifty NT.、Uh, mm -hmm. My country, the UK, England, has a few more coins. We've got one that is worth one penny. <laughs> and then two pennies or two pence, then five pence, ten pence, 
20 pence, 50 pence, 1 pound and 2 pounds. Lots and, of coins. Yeah, <laughs> most of them are circular, but the 20 pence and 50 pence, and you'll know this because you lived in England for a mm-hmm. while, they're unusual shaped. They have yeah. uh, more sides. Seven, seven yeah. sides, I think, something like that. I think it's seven. I'd have to, I haven't used English money for so long. I would have to go back and check, but I think they've got seven or five sides, but it's, it's not a circle. It's、yes. got square edges, as it were. And I think they just changed the pound to, instead of a circular shape, they also changed it to one where they also have many sides. So I'm、oh, not too sure how many sides,、okay. but definitely more than six. What coins does the US have? We have、um, the penny. Right. We also have. Five, which is a dime, Di- uh, a uh, nickel. nickel. nickel、yep. Ten is the dime. Yes. And then we also have fifty, but then we don't really get that as often. But you've got we- the, the twenty-five, right? The quarter. Yes, we have the quarter. Okay. I keep forgetting. I haven't been there in such a no. long time. No. Is、well. there a one-dollar coin? I think there is, but it's also not very common. Okay, so it's kind it's of usually just special occasions kind、yes. of thing. If、okay. you get it, it's like, oh, you're very lucky. All right, interesting.、Mm-hmm. There we go. So Charlie has found a coin.、Um, this is a story set in the UK, so maybe it was a a one pound or maybe even a fifty pence piece,、mm-hmm. fifty pence coin, and he used it to buy a chocolate bar. Does he get it? Let's take a look. It says. The last golden ticket was inside. Wow! There、so、we go. That is a very lucky coin. It is, but the story wouldn't be called Charlie and the Chocolate Factory if、yeah. he didn't find <laughs> that last ticket. So maybe it's not so much of a surprise. But there we go. He's found the golden ticket.、Uh, he takes it home. He shows his family, and the article says Grandpa Joe was so happy that he got out of bed for the first time in years. Wow! Yeah, he's <laughs> so excited. He's. They're all kind of old, and they're all a little. Bit sick, their bones are kind of weak, but he's so excited. He gets out of bed, he starts dancing around, and he sings a song in the movie.、Mm. And then it says Charlie could take one adult with him to the factory, so. He chose Grandpa Joe, so of course、oh, I think、nice. they have a special connection. They do; they have a close relationship, and of course, his dad will probably have to work, and his、mm-hmm. you know his mum's got to look after the others. But Grandpa Joe, who's up and about, he's up for it. We next see that they went to Wonka's factory with the other winners, and the gates. Opened at last, so they're all gathered there. Gloop and、uh, Mike TV and the two girls, Salt and Beauregard and Charlie's there. They've got parents and the one adult they can take with them, and the gates opened at last. Now we use this phrase "at last" to mean that something has happened after a long time of waiting. We're talking about. Things that you think, oh, has it happened yet? No, has it happened yet? Okay, now it's finally happened. It's happened at last. So we could also say, after driving for three hours, we got to the hotel at last.、Mm. Now I know you're all excited to find out what's in the factory and what happens next. But we're going to have to stop here because we've reached the end of day two of this article, and it's time for today's for you chat question. Okay, our question today is: Do you believe in luck? And explain your answer. So Charlie was obviously very lucky、mm-hmm. in the end to find it,、uh, this golden ticket. Do you believe in luck? I definitely think so. I think that. The universe and the world that we live in is actually quite interesting. Sometimes things just happen; you can't explain it, and then you feel like you're very lucky. I would say,、mm-hmm. like I think also it has, like for example, your career or you like your job or something. Sometimes these opportunities, of course, it depends on your skills and the type of person you are. But I think half of it also comes from luck. What do you think? I'd probably say about the same. Maybe, maybe a little less than half. I think you have a lot of control, but because things will just happen, you、mm-hmm. know, you call that luck or fate or chance or something like that. Would you say you are a lucky person? I definitely think so. I'm alive. I'm healthy,、mm-hmm. and I'm doing great. So I think I'm quite lucky. I don't. I'm not spoiled like 
miss salt there.、Mm-hmm. So I'm quite happy with what I have. Okay. What about you? Um, I think so. I th- I I'll give the example of playing the receipt lottery that we have here in Taiwan.、Ah. Uh, I usually get something every month, and oh, often quite, quite often two or three winners. Maybe that's because I'm using some of my family's receipts as well. We、mm-hmm. put them all together, but I usually get something out of it. So、wow. I would say I'm I'm fairly lucky in that respect. So、okay. maybe that carries over to a, I'm a, I'm a lucky dice roller. Oh, There's another、okay. thing.、I'm, uh, cards, not particularly, but dice. Yeah, I'm kind of lucky with dice. Okay, next so, time if we happen to play anything with yeah, dice, if, don't, don't, I'm going to get you on my side. Yeah, don't <laughs> dice against me. It's probably not going to end up well. There you go. So, what about you guys? Do you believe in luck? Do you think you are lucky or unlucky people? Think of some explanations to say why you believe this is the case. And we're going to leave you there because that's the end of the article. Join us again for day three and the end of chart. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. See you then. Bye, Bye for now. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. People all around the world bought Wonka's candy bars and searched for the five golden tickets. Everyone kept an eye on the news. The first one was found by Augustus Gloop, a fat, greedy boy from Germany. Other winners soon followed: rich, spoiled Veraca Salt, gum-chewing Violet Beauregard, and TV lover Mike TV. Charlie really wanted to find the final ticket. His family chipped in to buy him a chocolate bar for his birthday, but it wasn't there. Then Grandpa Joe used his savings to get another, but they were unlucky again. Then Charlie found a coin on the floor, and bought himself a chocolate bar. The last golden ticket was inside. Grandpa Joe was so happy that he got out of bed for the first time in years. Charlie could take one adult with him to the factory, so he chose Grandpa Joe. They went to Wonka's factory with the other winners, and the gates opened at last. Vocabulary review. Greedy. The greedy boy ate all the chips and left none for his sister. Winner. All of the winners of tonight's singing contest will advance through to the final round. Chew. The baby can't chew anything yet, so there are many foods he can't eat. Savings. Some thieves robbed a bank and stole many people's life savings. Coin. Could you lend me some coins for the drink machine? I don't have any.